you need to hoop that much. What, <laughs> what is <laughs> up? Welcome to the <laughs> Culture <laughs> Cannabis Podcast. Listen, you know, we're just having fun today. Yes. Uh, I, you know, we have some guests scheduled. They canceled, unfortunately, due to some unforeseen circumstances. COVID or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were rushing the capital. Rushing I don't know. The capital. Let's go with rushing the capital. Uh, but, uh, but so I called my boy Derek last minute. I was like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, ah, you know, I got a little lunch, but you know what? I'll just cut it quick and I'll send right over there. Come, came over real cool. Me and JC were taking pictures outside. <laughs> JC, JC was straight, just like flexing in the I saw it as soon as I was pulling up. I see just like posing. And shit. I, I started dying. I was on the phone with my girlfriend. I'm like, I'm like, hold on. I was like, Tony and JC are doing something funny up front. Like, I'm a content that. creator. JC, JC is a content creator, and anytime I'm with JC, JC is really good at asking um, for me to take photos, which enables me to take photos of myself. So how, I, how I, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate that he does that because it helps me create more content yeah. and uh, makes me think outside the box. Because I would have never thought about taking the microphone outside <laughs> to take the photos, but they kind of look lit honestly now that i'm looking at him listen it's jc has been putting in the work that's why it looks lit jc's like he's been putting in the work lately dude. i have been to the gym every yeah. just about every day last year I that's, think, I that's, think that's impressive and i saw you just came up on your your one year anniversary of sobriety dude that's yes. that's fucking awesome yeah. i wish like i wish just, i was as strong as you to do that because i i couldn't right now where i'm at i just couldn't do it yeah just yeah. drinking yeah sobriety. For, for this <laughs> I, I don't call it yeah i don't call it sobriety no jc's just not drinking i just yeah. don't drink the booze yeah, yeah. I just don't drink the yeah. booze. Man. yeah you know, I mean? you know little herb little <laughs> fun guy it's a little herb little JC, uh yo it's so funny too because like i already know exactly like when we go do our culture as foods like people ask like all right so we're gonna do a cocktail for you cocktail jc's like no no i'm off the booze i'm off the booze <laughs> Vir virgin cocktail yeah. virgin cocktail Bring, for me. uh can you give me a black coffee <laughs> have but, my 18th cup of black coffee please but oh uh God. but shit dude yo yeah Derek, listen i'm happy i got to bring on the podcast Podcast today because honestly like maybe one of the craziest things i think we'll ever see in history happen yesterday and i know it has nothing oh. to do with cannabis but like i just think it's important we talk about it because it's it is about culture and i think right now the where like where the world's at it's important to you know have different perspectives and hear people out so what happened yesterday was appalling but kind of kind of awesome kind of and let me explain why kind of awesome yeah, you better, you better fucking explain <laughs> why it's kind of awesome. So, we had a year of turmoil. There was, you know, all sorts of riots, all sorts of uh, unrest, uh, protests, uh, you know, crazy stuff, looting, all sorts of, you know, just shit stuff happening in a lot of major cities in America. And, Can I be real? you know, we looked at yesterday and yeah, it was not pretty. But you had 40,000 people descend on, not the not Fifth Avenue in New York City, not Kenosha, some small town in America where they destroy every freaking uh, storefront of a small business that they possibly can. Not out in Charlottesville, we were pulling down statues and, and spray painting the entire city. No, those Americans that showed up there yesterday focused on one building and one building only, the United States Capitol. And to me, while I didn't, I, there's so many variables to it. While I didn't agree with the, the actions that these people took place, like I thought they were fucking nuts, to be honest. Mm -hmm. like, to listen, to, be, to storm the Capitol building like they did, unarmed, many of them, by the way, were just like, fucking fuck you. And like there was, a, there running, was, there was I some, saw, I saw a lot there of was some armed people assault but, rifles but, in that crowd. <laughs> sure, but the people that were on video that were storming the Capitol were just unarmed maniacs that yeah. were just like pushing police. And like, you know, it was, it was, dude, it was so not what like the Republican party is about. And it was just like this fringe minority. But my point is they didn't destroy the whole city, did they? They chose one symbolic building and to me, that is why I thought it was awesome because it was, they felt as though their, their freedoms, that their democracy was taken advantage of. Now, whether it was or it wasn't, it's, it's going to be up for debate in, throughout the next few decades, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, it was a symbolic move to take over the house, to, 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 to ransack Nancy Pelosi's fucking stupid uh, <laughs> office, to sit on the Senate floor um the place wasn't in shambles it wasn't molotov it wasn't covered in graffiti afterwards there were some broken windows 
and I'm sure the inside, you know, got a little, you know, fucked up. But at the end of the day, I was gonna say no one was killed. <laughs> Unfortunately, one one poor woman was shot in the freaking neck, which I thought was nuts. There's there's a lot of videos you can see. The police allowed those people to storm that Capitol building. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah. There's that's the Capitol building. If the police wanted to stand and protect that building, they would have. There are a a number of videos I've watched where the police allowed those people to run over the Capitol. And that to me shows what they felt as a just uh, repercussion to whatever they felt that was unjustly done that happened mm -hmm. during the election. Those those police arguably are, were part of the problem. Whether they were instructed to do it or not, they did it, and they allowed the Capitol to be taken over. You see that video with the one, the one guy in, the, in like the stairwell, like, he's Stop! like wait, 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 and then he's running up to the next floor, <laughs> third floor, third floor, and I'm like, this is one guy. I'm like, there's no way that yeah. it was allowed to happen. Yeah, and who's filming that, by the way? It just, looks, I was wondering that too. It just looks like it is was that grandma just, behind him with the I, phone. I or? have no clue. It was just honestly straight chaos. Uh, and I don't, and I don't condemn I mean, any of it. I don't. I, I, no, sorry, not condemn. I don't, don't um, condone. Yeah. I don't condone any of it. Yeah. I think that 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 was. It's not the American way that made us look like a third world country. I heard a Freudian slip on like I think it was Fox News or CNN, and it was like, yeah, you know, they're storming the uh, the embassy, and like that's what we're used to in the yeah. Middle East. You know, where they storm the embassy, like that's what that's the kind of shit that happens in third world countries, not in America, not our capital building, not by American citizens. So for me. That's where I take offense to it. I'm like, and I crazy story, like just like a side note to that. I'm in a Snapchat group with like my cousin and his like psycho fucking friends that I met out at a bachelor party a couple years ago. And they always sending funny shit in there, right? One of those maniacs was on the front line getting maced. He was one of the guys getting maced. He went there from Long Island, New York, drove down there to cause a scene because you know what? He was passionate and he felt that he was justified because it was an unjust election. And again, whether or not it was or it wasn't, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know if the federal courts couldn't figure it out, if Mike Pence wasn't willing to be, you know, uh, the, the pony that, that got the whipping at the end here for Trump. Listen, Trump lost. You know, Biden Biden won. We're moving he, forward. He for sure took the L. You know, he took like, the L. I don't care. Like and, and there may have been a number of anomalies and fraud, for sure. I mean, I feel like there well, was. You could say every year there's voter fraud, and there always is. You know right? what I'm saying? Like, but like, like I get there has to be a small percentage of voter fraud every. There single always year. is, but there but was I, no way that it's enough to overturn this election. It was millions of votes. Mil like it was probably like I think Trump had seventy. Four, Biden had over 80 or so. It was like six to seven million votes or We've, something. That's historic. Like and, historic and granted, turnout. He, there may have been hundreds of thousands of anomalies, but again, it still wasn't enough to overtake. So at the end of the day, mm. you got to know when to chalk up an L. And, you know, and well, just take the, just take take the, the loss, Take bro. the L. Like, take man, the loss. Walk, Jesus Christ. You know, like, he's, he's trying to tell Pence he's a coward and shit. I'm like, dude, that boy had your fucking back for a long time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time, that yeah. guy took a lot of heat for you. He so. did take a lot of heat for Donald Trump. Dude. Yeah, so to, I mean, whatever. I to, mean. to question his courage, dude, <laughs> in, in that moment, and to be like, "It's on you, Pence." Like Pence, Pence is sitting there like, "Oh, uh, listen, like, you think I want to be responsible for like the first time ever we don't allow uh, the president elect to take office? You think Pence wants to be the reason? Yeah. Fuck no. Who would? Yeah, especially true. after what's going on in, in this it's presidency. Just, so it's just so crazy to me. Like, like Donald Trump is like literally out of his mind. Like he's, he's a little nuts. He's like literally a psychopath. I've never. I've like it's just so crazy to me. The like, fact that he's tweeting as early as he does in the morning and and he doesn't stop all well, day. Well, I mean, impressive. I mean, <laughs> I'm right, not, JC. I mean, I mean what, what he's accomplished and where he's been, you have to be a little bit psycho, a psychopath to kind of like pull off the crazy shit that that motherfucker's done yeah like you can't yeah. just be normal. you can't be a normal human no. yeah no i mean you know it makes it easy when your father is a multi-millionaire right sure right. Small, but, small loan of a million dollars okay but that <laughs> happened like literally in the beginning of his 40 to 50 year career look what he's, look what he's done since then uh, yeah listen, so like listen, listen he got a leg up at the beginning sure but to be able to sustain uh, he how many times did he file for bankruptcy yeah quite quite a bit so like a fucking lot, but you know what? Yeah. He's smart enough to figure out the, the the loopholes that legally he was able to I, take. Yeah, he's so. good. He's good at fucking people over. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's his, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, he's the deal. Yeah, art, art, art of the deal. Art of the deal. Touche. Don't JT. get fucked. Fuck someone over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jeez. Well, enough about politics. Let's talk about cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason why we're here. I'm rolling some right now. What do we got? What do we got? So this is um, some of uh, Leaf and Bind. So this is the new, um, the line that we're coming out of Planet 13 Medicine. Um, it's a value brand. 
Horses? Yeah, no, it's a leaping vine. Um, yeah, it's kind of going to be, you know, we have our trendy line. We yes. do a lot of live resin. Uh, we don't do any flower there. We have our medicine line. We do live resin. We do flower. This is going to be um, something more for, you know, the people that aren't looking to spend $60 an eighth. Uh, maybe something closer to like $35, $40 an eighth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. the leaf and vine has been great. Initially, it was just like a disposable ratio pen, and we decided that was a dying a dying uh, category, dying skew, so we needed to alter it a little bit. Is it going to be you think is it going to be branded or is it always yeah, going to be That's just like a just this a, is like a, a little sample sa pack. sample thing the there. Wait, what train pack? is that? I'm sorry. I think it's sheeple. Yeah, sheeple. Sheeple? Sheeple. sheeple. So <laughs> like sheeple. <laughs> so no, you're joking. Like sheeple. Yeah. Like so, people but like, like sheeple. sheeple. So we so I forget what when it happened earlier this year. We uh, we acquired the. Uh, I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it, Tone. So, trust me, it's not a strain that's going to be. So, we earlier this year acquired the W Babes licenses. Um, what? Yeah, you didn't know that. Uh, so yeah, did. cultivation production, like the whole. It's W Babes no more. They're no more. Uh, um, as of like May, June, something like that. So what happened was we took over all the genetics that were there, all the equipment, all the oil, everything that was still, you know, there that we, we bought it outright. Yeah. And um, so we've been going through a lot of the different strains, the genetics that are there, figuring out what works, what doesn't, what we're going to keep, what we're not going to keep. But there was some flower there that was already cured, sitting there, ready to go. Well, we're not W babes, so rebranded it, repackaged it, and Leaf and Vine uh, made its jump from a uh, a ratio CBD 0.3 disposable to it's going to be now becoming a flower and a cartridge line amongst other things. Cool. So, so yeah, Sheeple is one of the strains that uh, you know W babes blessed us with, and it's actually pretty damn good, despite the name. It's pretty freaking good. I, I like the I'm name. A, I don't think. I mean, it's just funny. Like sheeple, <laughs> sheeple, like, sheeple. <laughs> like like what people call each other. On yeah, Facebook. listen. Six milligrams limonene, <laughs> three point six carophyllene, bisabolol. If you can pronounce that, Ooh, one point seven right. osamine and linalool at one point three. Osamine. Nice little, nice little variation. You know, for your typical like, it's not not just your typical limonene, carophyllene, myrcene. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. You want to hear a funny story so about osamine? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. one time we were in Reno meeting with this guy who is supposed a supposed master grower. Master, like, master grower, master, master, master grower. grower. So many. Of them. And so I, 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 I forget what I was saying, but I think I was just like rattling off, or just. I think we're just, just talking about the the cannabis that we're that's being grown. Oh at yeah, yeah, farms. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so uh, some of our strains are are high in awesomeing. That's awesome. And gassy. Yeah, and so I say that this guy was like, "What'd you just say?" And I was like, <laughs> "Awesomeing." He was like. When when did awesome mean become a terpene? And I was like, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I didn't want to like, I wanted to argue with him, but I didn't want to argue. You with didn't him. want to embarrass him, really. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh, you know, may, you know, maybe something. Maybe it's a dip, maybe it's something. Something like that. Yeah, I, mean, I might be saying it. it wrong. And then, I, and then that shit, <laughs> right? like, that shit bothered me. That shit bothered me after that. So I texted him the next day. I'm like, oh, here's a little article about awesome mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Here's just, just a little heads up in case someone else brings this, uh, yeah. this thing up. Here. Just in case one of your strains has that in your labs come back and it says oh, awesome God. on it. Yeah, now you know. <laughs> yeah, now, you, now, now, you're, know. now you're aware. Yeah, we've, uh, yeah, you know, the industry, thanks. Uh, industry's been um, actually on the upswing. From what I can see, I think, I think we're turning a corner. From all this, I don't know about the folks out there, um, but, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. One thing that has not wavered, though, is people's addiction to smoking marijuana yes, yes. And, and and drinking alcohol has always been there right in tough times and in good times mm -hmm. you were going to drink and smoke and enjoy your vices regardless yeah, yeah. think about how many people are spending their six hundred dollars how many people spent their two thousand dollars that they got back whenever or 12 what was it it was the first stimulus i think it was 1200 uh, yeah. yeah i didn't get either i, was, uh, uh, I didn't get either either <laughs> yeah that's because yeah. we're ballers <laughs> <laughs> i was actually pissed Dude, it, it killed me the first time around because like i just started with planet i didn't have income the first month i was there i didn't have product the second month Preach i was there the choir, i brother. just got my shit yeah, right my shit off the ground and then i plummeted again april i did like 5k in sales you know now we're yeah. over 300k right but yeah. like at the time I was just picking my, you know, picking my, my, my pants up and yeah. being like, all right, let's go. And 
So for me, I had to actually, I was pulling for my savings and, mm. you know, l- luckily I had them, you yeah. know, left over from my last job and I was able to, you know, put away some money, but shit, man, could have used it, you know, and now people are, people are using it and they're using it at Planet 13 and other dispensaries yeah. around the valley. A hundred and fifty percent. Yeah. Man. And we're seeing the uptake. I mean, I don't know if you talked to any of your clients that you guys sell through yeah, culture hun- and cannabis. The, yeah. the, the New Year's week in Las Vegas was popping. Yes. Popping, bro. Yeah. I think we- Vegas Treehouse talked about they had the biggest day. Ever? Since they've been open, yeah, line out the door around yeah. the block, yeah. So a lot of our product, which is very cool. Yeah, the can the cannabis industry is booming, booming, baby. What's yeah. been going on in the Midwest with you guys? Ugh, the Midwest, the man. Midwest, man. It's just it's, crazy. It's a conundrum, right? It's just it's just a conundrum of of problem cannabis problems that we get to solve. But it's just c- continual <clears throat> par- <throat> partnerships. You're trying to it's still relationship, but like figuring out yeah. who the right people are yeah. is really it's the just key. Getting the right people we, on the bus, right? Yeah. In, the, in the right seat. And I think you know? also like we also went into the market at like the worst, not the worst time, but at like the worst retail oh, time, right? Like a problematic time. It was like you know it's this it's retail season. It's like you know naturally cannabis is down from. No, end of November to beginning of March, right? Yeah. Or it's February, a, you start to see, but yeah, yeah, really March, you're right. Really March is it's like, like the like, month where you're dude, like, boom, okay, yeah. business is Mar- good. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> March, April, May, it's like that's when shit really gets Hammering. popping off. So it's just like, um, I think, you know, I think uh, we'll start seeing uh, a shift come March and it gets warmer out there and we're able to get out there more. And we did the third day stint, I think, which is scary, and we were able to build a good client you know relationship and good people um but it's just a matter of consistently going out there and creating content and making sure that your i's and t's are crossed you guys have been grinding so hard yeah. like so many <laughs> restaurant reviews so yeah. many dispensary <laughs> reviews like every week bro I, every week you're doing like almost every day bro i see tony out there what's up guys we're right here and i'm like dude i thought he was over here yesterday like what the fuck <laughs> Yeah, it's dude, great. It, we get lost in the sauce, friend, and we just, we just send it. Um, it's just good. And you know, the thing is, is that when we take our trips, we get so much shit done. It's crazy, especially, especially like I think that's one of my favorite things to do is like plan out a trip because it's just like, all right, this is all the shit we're about to fucking accomplish. And it's like dope because you get to see all like I get to see all the content. Like I know exactly what content's coming down the pipe. JC's always asking me where we're going. What's where the schedule? Yeah. What's our <laughs> schedule? Where are we? Well, because you're out of your comfort zone. It's like you're you're not in mm. your world, right? You're yeah. out in Oklahoma mm. or wherever. And you don't know any of these people or these companies or what town you're in. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, where are we doing? Where are we going? Yeah. Like, where are we going? Uh, yeah. And I think I think the last trip that we did this year was was in Reno. And it was like, I, f- I was like, where? I wake up. I'm like, where am I? Oh, like, all the I, restaurants. Like, Tony yeah. yeah. all the good spots. Like, <laughs> Tony, knows, Tony knows all the best spots in Reno. You're not, you've been to Reno a few times, but you mm-hmm. used to be in Tahoe more, spent yeah. a little bit of time up there. Mm-hmm. You yeah. weren't hitting I wasn't like, in, in the Reno area. I was I mainly know, in Tahoe. Right. Yeah. You weren't hitting the Midtown Virginia yes, Avenue, yes. fucking like Virginia industry shit. Like, I'm well, telling you, now you know though, because oh, yeah. you're going I'm, out with this I'm, guy. I'm, I'm a <laughs> Reno fucking vet right oh, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, like, JC is a Reno vet. It's so funny too, because like cats, a lot of cats know me up there, and they obviously see JC a lot. So it's like so funny, because like I'll be out and be like, oh shit, it's JC fucking goat. <laughs> uh, like that shit is so funny to me, because like it's just like, you know, it's like, well, I'm fucking JC, is my yeah. guy, right? But celebrity like, to, up there. But now. to, like, to, to <laughs> the, and these got people, they like, yo, like, you know, they, JC is a celeb, you know what I'm saying? Well, they, they all know Tony, right? So, so, so full time so Tony. deeply yes. right full time Tony and, and and they don't they never really met me a lot of them but they see me on they Instagram and, like that. and then when I walk up he's like oh there he is yeah, yeah. <laughs> they get so excited too and uh, usually you know JC's always well dressed so he's like wearing a good outfit just, every single person that meets JC first time is like oh man I like those pants oh man I like that jacket oh those are some nice shoes JC wears yeah. one stutton part of his outfit swagger yeah. alert yeah, 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 yeah. swagger alert I love it it's one time one time yo someone someone one told JC, like, man, you must be rich because you look like a million bucks. Bro. <laughs> I, had, I had my Walmart shirt yeah, on. Yeah, and, uh, had his Walmart crisp. <laughs> made crisp. JC's weak. He yeah. was like, fuck yes. Yeah. If, if you get the Walmart t-shirt and you put the crease right in the middle, man, you, you look like a million bucks. Uh, dude, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, that thing's a Dior shirt at that point. Oh, you know my God. Saying? That's so funny. Uh, speaking of clothing, I noticed you're wearing a Bills hat. Oh, dude. I noticed you're wearing a Bills hat over there. I've, I've been repping them so hard as of late. I mean, I've always repped the Bills. I mean, it's, I've been a fan well, for a long you're, time. It, it, yeah, that's the thing I was going to get to. I'm from New York. Okay, for those of you, you don't know, I'm from Long Island. Uh, not Long a, Island, motherfucker. <laughs> Long Island, strong island. I was never a Jets fan or a Giants fan growing up. Uh, my dad was, my brother was, right? Both teams. My dad was a Giants fan, brother was a Jets fan. 
I was a Fairweather fan with football because I never really, baseball. My Yankees are my shit. Yeah. But when I was growing up, or Knicks basketball, mm-hmm. I never like I'm like that. I, I never strayed from the Knicks. God save my soul. It's like being a Mets fan. Uh, yeah, it is like being the. But it, I'm a Mets fan. Well, exactly. <laughs> and most most Bills guys I knew were Mets fans because you have to have a certain. Uh, tenacity you have to have a certain like resiliency (laughs) to be a bills fan to be a mets fan if you're from cleveland to be a browns fan not this year it's exciting year for the bills and the browns but my point is you got to have resiliency to be a sports fan from from like those specific cities because they're the underdogs always yeah and they don't win ever yeah. and so or they, you know what it you know what the problem is it was always like there was 500 or less yeah it's never it's never enough it's there it's almost there but not quite this year what's there's, his name josh josh allen josh, josh allen josh, josh allen right Stephon diggs sick the, team the, the whole squad man it's been you know it's been awesome yeah you're right dude and you know why i was thinking about it the other day because <laughs> and i think it's a lot of back east people I, I, me being from the west coast i think about how soft i am compared to some of these east coast motherfuckers we're hardest we're hardest just because fuck. just because of the weather right yeah. like the oh, fact yeah. that like i've never had to really endure <laughs> bad winners you know what i'm you, saying like you spend a winter li- living in new york city or a summer by the way which yeah, summer is miserable too oh. yeah <laughs> he's like a human as fuck how about i mean i've been there in both times and so like just like being there like i don't know how i would like you know a, you have to be able to adapt right and so um i think moving to reno gave me a slight taste but reno does it only snows maybe 15 20 times a year in reno right it's literally but it's like <laughs> buffalo is almost always snow outside Negative. the summer yeah but and so what's so crazy right is like those people are just like crazy motherfuckers They're sick. like like that like legitimately like it's negative 20 they're tailgating they're slamming people on fucking tables, tables. folding tables they're, incredible there's bitches in fucking ta- i shouldn't call them bitches there's ladies in uh <laughs> bathing suits if you're in <laughs> buffalo and you're raging <laughs> on a sunday <laughs> these bitches are fucking wild <laughs> they're getting power bombed through folding tables true they're shotgunning beers these these bitches are crazy. I've seen some disgusting things uh, at Buffalo Bill Tell You so. <laughs> I went to I went to school in upstate New York. I can, so I can relate. Not to Buffalo. Pe- people don't but under- I can relate. People don't understand that upstate New York is like white trash and yeah. hood mixed into yep. one person bro. straight up and people do not understand how like how it is up there it so hard, like my, it like hard my me yeah yeah it hard me so much yeah like jc's people literally it's <laughs> we're so, i had a story the other day someone told us a story that we we're on a phone call about about how like he was so surprised because this guy was from oklahoma and he was saying how uh, how surprised he was People in Buffalo are so white trash. Yeah. <laughs> I was just oh, like, you're surprised? Uh, yeah. But it's, it's like, that shit's real. Well, bro. people do in upstate New York. So I'm from downstate Long Island, Strong Island. Like yeah. it's, it's a suburb of New York City. It's, yeah. it's like true. But I know people call it the sticks, too. When you get further out east, it's funny. You go from Manhattan to... People in Manhattan call it the sticks. Yeah. You go from Manhattan <laughs> to hood to a uh, hipster and affluent oh, yeah. to a uh, rich Jewish community uh, to... Um, white collar, blue collar, and blue collar, blue collar, and then wealthy. And then boom, once you hit like a certain exit on the LIE, Long Island Expressway, <laughs> it's just wealth. When the fork starts. Yeah. Long Island, like, it's got fork. <laughs> Buffalo, upstate New York, and there's, by the way, there's tons to do on Long Island. Sports, yeah. there's like, you know, boating, all that. Mm. Upstate New York, you know what you do upstate New York? <laughs> You drink, you do drugs, and you shoot guns. Yeah, like that's it. And eat, and, and, eat and, chicken wings and watch. <laughs> yeah, eat chicken wings and watch sports yeah. and the Buffalo Bill. So like, there ain't much. No offense, upstate New York people who watching this. <laughs> shout out to Albany. <laughs> shout out Odiata. Shout out Binghamton. Shout out Buffalo. Syracuse. <laughs> Say, shout out <laughs> Cuse. <Keys. laughs> you know. Rochester up in yeah. here. Doug Flutie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> But yo, Just yeah, you said it, man. He played. He played for the Bills. And- but yeah, exciting year for football for sure. Yeah. yeah, Buffalo Bills. I'm excited for you. So they're playing this weekend. Yeah, or? cold Saturday. Uh, oh, Saturday game. I'll be in Boise actually for my best friend's birthday, Ryan Soupy. But oh. I'll be up there. We're gonna be watching the game. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he and I already told him. I was like, listen, bro, I don't care what we're doing from 11 o'clock to one one thirty. It's an 11 o'clock game. Uh, it's a 10 o'clock game. But in Boise, I'm gonna. It's our head in Boise. If, so. you're, if you're like with Tony on a Sunday, <laughs> dude, it's like he's got to experience it so like, many Sundays. Yeah. Come on, I want to hear. From Jason, I mean, so give me like, give me like a good, like a good. Like, he got to reminisce. see a win and a loss. Well, I mean, like, can we just start with how my normal Sundays are, right? Like, yes, please, because they're quite different, right? Like, you know, I mean, you know, I like a quiet Sunday. You know, I like you know naps. You know, maybe late breakfast. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some some 
quiet time, Chill. right? You know what I mean? I, you know, I have teenagers and things in my house, you know? So on Sundays, I like things a little bit quiet. Right? <laughs> I always yeah. forget they're like teenagers. She's still yeah. with teenagers yeah. at home. Yeah. Like Way kids, different than having like kids under 10. 15 year old so, um, kids at home. Yeah. So, so like, you know, sometimes when we travel on our business trips, you know, um, they fall on a Sunday, right? And, and 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 during football season, it gets very fucking loud in the Airbnb with Tony, and, and they're screaming, and things are getting slammed, and then there's like you know there's like slobber flying through the air, and you know he's happy though, so, you know. So I'm, I'm when Tony's happy, I'm happy. So you know. it's a, it, I'm like literally like a dog when I watch the Bills game. Like I'm just like screaming. And so yelling. what's like an, what's an L? Like what's like what's a loss look like? Like because I know how Tony is when he he's the, like yeah, he I was the, there for the loss. It was the big loss. Arizona loss. The, the Arizona, which loss. is pathetic, by the it, way. It, Arizona, it, come on. No, they did, they were pretty good this season. Yeah, all right, fine. They, right. And that, so the the way they lost was ten seconds left on the clock. Kyler Murray rolls out. He almost gets sacked. Mix, misses the sack. Lobs up this ball. There's four Buffalo. Oh yeah, Bills. it's like it was a play and, of the year, basically. The, yeah, literally can't be the number one play of the year. Yeah, the, DeAndre Hopkins jumps over four all four, four guys, men. Just grabs this ball out of the air, brings it down for a touchdown to win the game. It was it was the most incredible highlight I've seen in a long time. Yeah. It is the epitome of a Hail Mary. Yeah. That yeah. that was the picturesque Hail Mary. It was at the last second of the game. He caught it over four fucking <laughs> safeties and yeah. linebackers, wherever, yeah. you know, like yeah. cornerbacks. Dude. It got really loud in the uh, living room. Yeah. That night. yeah. Well, because it was like such a, it's, a, it's such a roller coaster of emotions because, like, right, the, you know, literally three plays before, they had just scored a touchdown with a minute left on the clock to win the fucking game, right? So I'm fucking exuberant and I'm like, all right, cool. They're going to get the ball. They're going to get soft. We have great defense. Our, our fucking secondary is. Uh, amazing, might be the best secondary in in the league right now. And so I'm just thinking like, oh, this is gonna be nothing. Like they're probably gonna sack Kyle, uh, Kyler. Nope, fucking th gets. I think it was like he had two plays before, and I was like, all right, they're gonna let him get in the midfield. And they were up by a touchdown. I was like they had yeah, they had to score a touchdown. I'm like, okay, they're not gonna score a touchdown. Like they might get in the field goal range. I'm thinking that. And then last play, I'm like, oh, this is easy, bro. They're gonna sack his ass and then throw the ball up. Yeah. And I remember fucking literally. I at the Airbnb slamming the couch <laughs> like literally picking it up like just like <laughs> picking it up and dropping it and the whole shout was like Chuck Joy JC all like are you okay out here and I was like no I'm not okay in, uh, inside the mind of full time Tony yeah, by the way now you know where that all came from internally right like uh, god yeah a lot of yelling a lot of screaming Chuck oh my god Chuck think, pr I pray for Chuck just Chuck's a, a, you know too good to me honestly like, Chuck doesn't <laughs> Chuck is so good. He and like you realize like how hard of a worker he is. Yeah. Like because you, it's always the times when like you know we all hustle, right? Like yeah. we all get our job done, but you know, three of us, our downtime is our downtime. Yeah, and we enjoy it, and it, it's a necessary thing. Mm. Chuck's such a savage, dude. I've I've literally when we're having our downtime, we're kicking back yeah. and having a couple of brewskis and a joint. Chuck's working. Yeah, Chuck's, Chuck's is working. working. Yeah. Chuck's happiest when he's working. Yeah, yeah. And so, I know, and I love that about him. <laughs> so Chuck, I met Chuck. I had so I was like, all right, Chuck, we have to go watch football. Like, listen, bro, like, it's Sunday. You're coming with me. I don't give a fuck. So we we went and watched the game the first weekend at Buffalo Wild Wings, and in Oklahoma, you can smoke in Buffalo Wild Wings. Everyone's just smoking we, there. No smoking cigarettes. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was just, I mean, yeah, I mean it's getting sick. pretty loose. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's super loose, super loose, and especially if you hang out with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I was ripping the vape in there, but yeah. yeah. So Chuck sat literally at Buffalo Wild Wings in this corner table, so I could watch the Buffalo Bills game while eating wings, drinking beer, and he's literally working the whole time. And then, got his laptop out. Yeah, has his laptop out. Buffalo and he, and then he would just like, I, I think to be supportive, he'd be like, oh yeah, they're doing real good. They're doing, they're doing real good. <laughs> <laughs> and we won. We won both weekends, so it was good. JC, yeah. let me ask you a question. Okay. What's the origin story of Chuck and you? And uh, like, yeah. what's the origin story? Uh, so Ch I was producing um, house music events on, on the Strip. And how, what year are we talking round about? Uh, 20, 2014, 2015. Okay. Um, and then I had created a, a monthly concept with, with another partner named Gabriel, and, and it was called Sundays. And so it was a monthly house. I remember this. Yeah. I remember show, this. And then we would book, you know, mid, mid tier house DJs and come. And, um, and it was the same event process that, that I still implement today, right? And, you know, I would do the event and I would create content and tell a story you know, yeah. on social media. And, 
um, we needed uh, we needed a, a camera guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and somebody knew somebody that knew somebody, and Chuck came out and did our edits for 150 bucks. So that's how we met Chuck, and um, I just I I never stopped working with him from that that one day. He did all the videos for for Sundays, and then he started doing. Um, all the video he did the very first video for the culture and cannabis events and um at that time i had a, another graphic designer on on board it was mauricio oh yeah um, i remember that guy yeah, yeah. He, uh commonwealth yeah right? great great yeah. guy that does most of the marketing and uh, stuff for the uh, he pretty much runs downtown downtown basically yeah. runs downtown yeah. um but he doesn't video edit right so i had to have it's him, tedious uh, by the way it's like you know for someone you know in in that live or doing anything you know it's stuff and i've done this before and so i know chuck's pain mm -hmm. what what you know probably isn't pain anymore it's pleasure for him the pain is the pleasure for chuck yeah. <laughs> but it's tedious so it's something that you know while you may love it it's time consuming and you gotta take some, yeah, yeah so yeah. And, so go on but yeah i mean so chuck um so like the the marketing programs that i run i always require like specialty skilled people around me right and so chuck was kind of some of the beginning people that i put around me and so i just kept him on board um and then you know mauricio got to a point where he was sick of doing the graphic design and chuck was like hey i'll, I'll, I'll try it yeah. <laughs> and i was like okay so at that point chuck started doing all the graphic design for culture and cannabis reworked the the logo started doing all the the flyers and when you saw started seeing our flyers looking like the like the coachella flyers, yeah i remember yeah when, like like chuck took over um and then you know through that process then i got like marketing gigs um you know other places and he started being you know my partner on those things and it was just invaluable invaluable yeah. right and with new leaf and 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 now we're 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 fucking married and partners in a company so. yeah <laughs> you guys are married and partners in a company <laughs> yeah Man. i would ask you know where's chuck right now but the answer yeah. would be the same yeah. he's working oh yeah. uh, yeah. no actually yeah. he's meeting me at boxing in four minutes oh no way <laughs> yeah you go to fight capital yeah wait yeah. me and him go together dude so we we, we trade with fight capital so oh, we, you do, have, wait, wait. we do a marketing there are you going on what's today thursday are you going thursdays at 5 p.m yeah is that what you're doing on a normal uh tuesdays and thursdays me and chuck Let's Quick go. fight capital story because I think okay. shout out fight capital. Shout out fight capital. I've, that's my boxing gym. I, I know. Don't, yeah. Don't go as often as Tony does. They probably <laughs> shit talk me over there. <laughs> no, they were shit talking me. They saw me when I got back. They're like, they were just shit talking me. They're like, oh, I see you be fucking eating a lot of food and smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, yes, yeah. I was. <laughs> yeah, Jay over there. Jay, yeah. Yeah, the coach, good guy, a New York guy as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, a great gym introduced by uh, Ranson Shepard yeah. and you know his brother Royson, uh, Poi, you know two two big uh, Micronesian Hawaiians, yeah. you know dude, they they've got s some thick roots and they're the toughest guys. Let me tell you, you you stand in the in the ring. I'm a welterweight. I'm like 170, 175. I don't know what you're at, Tony, but these guys are 220. Poi, he's fucking slimming down, but yeah. he's like 250, 260. Yeah, I'm I'm probably the smallest guy in there yeah, when easy. I go and. If you wanna, if you wanna get toughened up, you wanna learn something too. Guys like Johnny Walker train there. Guys like uh, Michael Pereira uh, train there. These are UFC uh, top ten fighters, by the yeah. way, in their divisions, lightweight, they, they light got, heavyweight. They got super strong ties to the UFC and the boxing community here in Vegas. I mean, a lot of their coaches box at UNLV. Um, they, you know, literally every name any big fighter, and they've been in and out of that place. Yeah, oh, Joey Niz, yeah, he's totally, one, of the top, yeah. one of the top welterweights, yeah. uh, <laughs> potential middleweights coming out of uh, Las Vegas. I don't know why he doesn't start boxing, bro. Like he Joey Niz broke my fucking. Uh, he either broke my rib or I, I got a slipped that. rib. Uh, dude, I, I've, I've had it. issues with everything. We're sparring. This guy don't know how to fucking pull a fudge. Joe Niz, you know. No, but let me he tell just, you, he, he just cracked. He's yeah. good, dude. He's good. He's got some good form. Yeah. He throws, yeah. he throws like Tyson he, when he wants. He just like, throws with his legs, bro. It, it's those with those fucking hands. Those yeah. big, that big fucking barrel yeah. ass he's got. And whack. Yeah, he yeah. just gets you, bro. It just you know. Gets you. But yeah, great gym. Yeah, you know, I don't want to cut into your gym. This guy, we don't want to cut into his, his gym time. I know, I know. They're gonna be, they're gonna be like, oh, I bet you, Croak is watching right now. He's gonna be like, oh, so if Croak's watching. Watching. Croak, if you're watching, I'm coming soon. I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I really I got all the equipment. I'm ready to go. Uh, Tuesday and Thursdays. Tuesdays. Th are you going 5 o'clock every time? I go 5 o'clock. All right, we'll talk about this off air a little okay. bit more. Guys, thank you. Let's go. Of course. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming on the show, man. This was uh, a blast, as always. Like, last minute call, I was like, I knew it was, done deal. I knew, yeah. I knew that I wanted to do this with you, and then I was just like, it's going to happen naturally, and it did. <laughs> it was easy. It was easy. And I haven't seen you guys in a minute, man. Yeah, so working on it, you know, going away. I was in yeah. New York, and you, know, you guys were yeah. traveling. It's, you know, it's been a minute. We yeah. got to do it. Yeah. Uh, 
you know? Soon, we gotta do a big again soon, bro. We're gonna throw a big one, a big banger, a yeah. big old banger. Yeah, big banger. Soon, can't wait. JC's already got something. Up his <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that's it. Yeah, Fuck, it's four fifty nine, so I'm gonna be late to boxing, but it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Culture and Cannabis podcast. Uh, go follow Derek, Derek Las Vegas on Instagram. Um, go check out all his brands. He has Trendy, Ha Ha. Uh, leaf and vine, dreamland uh, chocolates. Uh, you know. Just go to Planet yeah. Thirteen and buy something there, and that you help out, Derek. Uh, we got JC Coates yeah. in the building, and that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.